So these 2022 cars are radically different to anything we've seen before, and all of it stems around this new floor. And these really haven't changed in, well, the last 30 years or so. So we've grabbed Craig Scarborough to go back over how both last year's floor and this year's floor works, and why these drivers may have to drive in this bizarre new way. Yep, so we're back getting nerdy about F1 cars, because as Scarb says, without the cars, motorsport is just jogging. Let's get into it. So broadly, there are two ways of creating downforce on a race car. Now you can create downforce by essentially using angle of attack so pushing air upwards and using the opposite reaction to push the car downwards and we kind of use this on race cars and it's in wings but that's in partnership with another effect and that's this second one and this is by creating a pressure differential like the airfoil of a wing does it creates high pressure on the top and low pressure on the bottom and use the difference to create downforce. Now, the floor also does this, and this is what we're gonna go through today. Effectively, you have the aerofoil shape there, which creates high pressure above, and then air accelerates underneath, creates lots of low pressure below, and the difference in the pressures gives you the force, pushes the car down onto the track, and we, we can all understand that. Now, that's just the inverse of what happens on a plane, but where armchair F1 fans are left in the dust is underfloor downforce, and this is where you generate an area of low pressure beneath the car, and this means that you have this high pressure above the car and low pressure below, and this difference means that the car is forced downwards, very clever. Now, We've got that, but it turns out creating this lower pressure area underneath the car is pretty mad. Then you have a second effect, which is called ground effect. Now, as I said, wings sort of kind of sit up in fresh air and they work on their own. The underfloor works with the road surface underneath. It's called ground effect. It's what Lotus effectively discovered in the late 70s. So it's just that interaction between the ground and the floor. And the great thing with the underfloor downforce, it comes with very little drag and also it's less influenced by turbulence of um, cars in front and creates slightly less turbulence for the cars behind. So you can see why this 2022 regulations are focused much more on what's happening under the floor. So this downforce is almost free. You get grip in the corners, but minimal drag on the straights. So how do you do this without creating a whole load of drag? If we kind of take a journey of a piece of air going under the car, it will approach the car, uh, hopefully without being too turbulent, and it reaches things like the front wing and the barge boards. And it depends where from the center line this piece of air is, depends where it goes. If it's pretty much towards the center span of the car, then it's gonna go through the underfloor. As soon as it goes kind of past this Y250, kind of 25 centimeters from the center line, it's more likely to go out and around the car. So we'll ignore the, those bits of air. For us today, they're not interesting. So we'll cope, look at the one that goes under the front wing. You really don't want it to be too disturbed by any aerodynamic devices as it passes under the wing. And what will happen is as it reaches the first piece of floor of the side pod, what we call the lower leading edge, it will suddenly accelerate. And the reason for that is what's happening further down the floor. As it accelerates, the pressure drops. So you'll have a low pressure area just under the front of the side pods. Then the air will then flow under the flat piece of floor, still at high speed, still at low pressure, and again, the more flat floor that you have, uh, the more low pressure, the more downforce you can create. But the key physics piece here is that air pressure decreases as speed increases. It's called Bernoulli's principle and it's very complicated to understand, so that's out of the realms of today's video. And then, as this piece of air then reaches where the diffuser starts, to form, which is what we call the kick line, where the floor goes from being flat, and this is just in front of the sort of the front edge of the rear wheels. Uh, it will accelerate again as it then rushes into the diffuser and then slows down because the diffuser is where all the air expands into. And it's not the expanding air itself that's creating the downforce, it's the rush it creates to the air approaching it, which as I said was at the front of the side pods and at the kick line of the diffuser. And then effectively, once that piece of air is then slowed down in, to, in through the diffuser, it then will be flipped upwards behind the car. So the diffuser is really there to pull air through under the car, and the floor then uses that to create massive downforce. And the greater area you have of floor, the more downforce you have. And so incidentally, that explains why this rear section was cut away for last year's regulations, all to cut down on the surface area, and then after that, 
reducing the amount of downforce you have. Anyway, the main reason these flat floors are going this year is because of where the air goes once it leaves the diffuser. On the you know cars up to 2021, it would effectively be sort of blown wide, not very high, and that will mean that air will then have all of this energy taken out of it. It'll be very turbulent and it'll be hitting the car behind. But obviously that then makes the path for that air to then create downforce on the subsequent car so much worse. So that's all kind of part of the story of what's going on underneath the old floors. So we've discussed how you've got low pressure under the floor and then high pressure above or even ambient pressure to the side of the car. The problem is all of that slightly higher pressure air wants to go into this low pressure region under the floor. And if it does that, you lose downforce because you lose that pressure differential. What teams then have to do is to find a way of managing that airflow. Now, lots of people describe this as um, a, a, a virtual skirt, having airflow spinning along the edge of the floor and stopping this high pressure air going underneath. That was the case back in the sort of the 80s, but things have got a lot more sophisticated. The front edge of the floor is actually air coming out from under the floor, worked by the barge boards and all the other aerodynamics at the front of the car. That's actually creating downforce itself and it's pushing airflow out which means it makes it harder for airflow on that sort of second half of the floor the bit that got tapered away in 2021 by the regulations makes it harder for air to slip under there but some air air will slip under. And rather that being the negative things, the thick teams have worked it so it's actually improving. So you're actually getting air rushing in under the sides of the car, creating low pressure, and also helping just stop the dirty air that spills off of the rear tires going under the floor, particularly into the diffuser. So these old flat floors are out, and well, now we have these aero tunnels and strap in, these things are properly genius. And these, rather than a flat floor and then this kick line that ramps up into the diffuser, now they're these sort of three-part aero tunnels. So you'll have this bit by the side of the cockpit where you have a ramp section going down, converging, and then you have a section which I've described in some of my drawings as a flat floor. It's not strictly flat, it's kind of curved. You're then allowed to have a much bigger, effectively a diffuser, which is just an even bigger tunnel, starts much earlier. What that then means is if we go back to, you know, the journey of the air going under the floor, the air will arrive uh, at the front of the car, pretty much untouched, and then go into this converging section. And it will start to accelerate as it goes into this converging uh, section until you reach that first kick line. And this is where you'll get the first burst of downforce, the first burst of really low pressure. Now what's great is that this initial hit of low pressure is right in the middle of the car, meaning the downforce is evenly distributed front to rear. So the air will accelerate under the floor and then reach the final, much bigger tunnel uh, diffuser section. And again, it will accelerate. And these aero tunnels will create more downforce force than the flat floors we had before because the air is being worked harder and there's more of it. On the previous cars this would create a load of dirty air that made life much worse for the following car and it came out the rear of the diffuser very low and spread wide so the following driver had to just deal with it. Now what you'll have is the tunnels will end with uh, the beam wing, which is the lower rear wing, which is a quite strong, quite a powerful wing. And then you'll have this big curved upper wing. And these will all collect the airflow that comes out of the diffusers and then push it upwards and eventually outwards, which they're describing as the mushroom. So this actually lifts the dirty air up and above the car behind, which is absolutely genius. That means that the car behind will still have some kind of wake low and central behind the car, but either side of it, it will be relatively clear air, which means the canny driver in 2022 won't simply follow another car in line. They're going to get much more downforce by being slightly offline of the car ahead because this mushroom is creating such a narrow wake behind it and the drivers can avoid that and sit in cleaner air to get even more downforce. So it's going to be really interesting to see if drivers in the first race are going to use this odd line following another car. Now one final question I have for Scarbs was, well, without all this complex carbon confetti like the front wing bits and the barge boards, does that mean that Max could have had the shunt in Hungary and not been so down on performance? The new cars have much less of that furniture, so uh, you're going to get a, 
a, a reduction in that kind of you know race pace being affected by damage however there is a couple of sensitive parts of the car first of all you have some veins in the throat of the the uh, the, the, the front of the uh, underfloor if you get a lot of damage to the edge of the car uh, the edge of the floor area then yes the driver is going to lose a huge amount of downforce probably more than they would have in the uh, current regulations of cars but i think on balance these cars should be much more resistant to damage um, on uh, on the, the bodywork, particularly you know, around the underfloor. Well, that's these genius floors. And thanks to Scarves for bringing that encyclopedic F1 knowledge. And thanks to you guys for watching. Check out this playlist with a load of other F1 breakdowns with Scarves, and we'll catch you in the next one.